Chapter 18 We crossed a dirt path to a larger log hall at the corner between two lines of huts. Thunder echoed across the mountains, and we barely made it inside the hall before rain began to pour down. The hall was almost fifty meters long and twenty wide. Tables had been set up in four long rows, under a high arching roof woven from branches and vines. The drum of rain on the roof was almost deafening. The heat had gotten more intense, and the air seemed wet enough to swim through. Still, Gamalpar shivered, as if with a chill, enough so that Kirimt and one of the female Denisovans, I had a difficult time telling them apart, provided him with a roughly woven blanket. Four more females carried in a pallet and offloaded food onto a head table. I watched them with real curiosity, for they were not Denisovans, nor like Venevra and Gamalpar, and not at all like me. Their heads were long, their jaws prominent but chinless, and they walked with a graceful lope. In some respects, they reminded me of Riser, but larger. When they were done, having delivered two pallets, the table was piled high with bowls of cooked grains, fruit, and a thick paste that tasted of salt and meat, but was not meat, not any meat I knew, at any rate. A flagon of cool water and another flagon of what tasted like honey mead, but was purple, completed the repast. We filled wooden plates, then gathered at a corner table to eat. Gamalpar sat sidewise, his sore legs sticking out and swollen tight at the ankle. Yet he was not being tended to. Were we to be left to our ailments as well as biting insects? Was there some greater life-shaper plan at work here requiring that we suffer more? For the moment, after the food-bearing females departed, we three and the Denisovans were the only ones present, eight of us sitting in a space that could hold many more. The shadow wave had not accompanied us. But slowly, others strolled in singly and in groups and took their places. The hall was finally half-filled by at least a hundred humans. My eye was far from expert, but I judged they came in seven or eight varieties. They seemed to have no prejudices against each other, and no problems either serving or mingling, as if out of long habit. Venevra chuffed again, still unimpressed. How many of our people are here? She asked Gamalpar, looking around with a pinched expression. Just us, he said. I'd always wondered about Venevra's prejudice, the quick ease with which it rose up, the difficulty she had in tamping it back down, even in my case. In the cities, someone divided humans against each other to control them. I paused, wooden spoon lifted to my lips, listening to the inner voice. This forerunner is unlike the Master Builder. He fosters unity, not division. He may be strange and weak, but he is not cruel. Perhaps he alone of his kind remains, and all the others are dead. We had certainly seen enough dead forerunners, and no other live ones. Across the table, I met Gamalpar's look when he peered at me, as if hearing similar words in his own thoughts. Again, I wondered how the two of us could ever bring our ancient experiences, knowledge, and personalities together without losing our own souls in the bargain. Jenna Menor entered with the last stragglers. For reasons I could not articulate, and not just the lack of smell, my queasiness only grew stronger. I see two of you have the librarian's mark, but one does not, said Jenna Menor, standing behind me. I craned my neck to keep him in sight. Chalkis, you clearly remember Erda Tyrene, do you not? I felt my flesh creep at the steady gaze of so many faces, so many kinds of faces. Yes, I said. I would go back there if I could. I believe the librarian would have us all return, Jenemender said. That is not yet possible. Eat, be strong, rest. There is much to be done here and little time. 